Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the anthrax toxin. Okay, so we've now discussed what a lipid raft is. It's just this place in the plasma membrane where you have odd lipid composition, basically. You, instead of having uh, glycerolipids, i.e. lipid molecules based on glycerol, uh, such as phospholipids, triglycerides, diglycerides, monoglycerides, instead you have uh, a lot of glycosphingolipids, specifically ganglicides, uh, cholesterol molecules, and also ergosterol molecules. Now, now, uh, basically, when you take this heptamer that we've now constructed, which, remember, consists of seven ligand receptor complexes, basically, so seven of these complexes containing a uh, protective antigen 63 molecule from the anthrax toxin, and then uh, tumor endothelial marker 8, which is the uh, anthrax receptor sorry, the anthrax toxin receptor, and also that co-receptor, which was LRP6, okay? When we take this heptamer, which I'll just draw out here, and we remove the palmitoyl groups from the uh, intracellular portions of the uh, tumor endothelial marker 8 proteins, what happens is this heptamer can now move from the glycerolipid portion of the phospholipid bilayer into lipid rafts. Okay, so it's going to go into a lipid raft, and I'll show this by having it over here. So I'll colour this portion of the membrane in a different colour to denote that it's a lipid raft. Okay, so over here in orange, this portion of the membrane isn't made up of glycerolipids, but uh, it's a lipid raft and is therefore made up of mainly glycosphingolipids and cholesterol and ergosterol. Okay, so after depalmatoylation, it's going to move into lipid rafts. Okay, and as I said, this is unusual, because usually, if you palmatoylate a protein, that promotes it going into the lipid rafts. Okay, in this case, you're having to depalmatoylate uh, the intracellular aspect of our uh, tumor endothelial marker 8 proteins in order for this heptamer, uh, which obviously contains seven tumor endothelial uh, marker 8 proteins, uh, to move into the lipid raft. Okay, now once it gets into the lipid rafts, there is a special enzyme present within lipid rafts, okay? So this is an enzyme which is sitting within the membrane, and basically it's an enzyme that is in the class of enzymes known as E3 ubiquitin ligases, okay? And this is not just one enzyme. There are a huge number of different enzymes which would all be considered E3 ubiquitin ligases. It's basically... Um, you're called an E3 ubiquitin ligase because you stick ubiquitin molecules onto proteins, okay? So you're classified according to your function, basically, and therefore there are many different enzymes which perform this function and therefore are considered E3 ubiquitin ligases. Now, the specific ubiquitin ligase that is present within lipid rafts is a ubiquitin ligase known as CBL. Okay, and what this is going to do, basically, is it's going to attach ubiquitin groups onto uh, the um, intracellular portion of the uh, tumor endothelial marker 8. So let me just remind you of the structure of one of the subunits of this heptamer. Okay, so remember it consists of a tumor endothelial marker 8 protein, which no longer has its palmitoyl groups because it's gone into the lipid raft. Then we also have our co-receptor, which, remember, is the LDL receptor-related uh, protein 6, so LRP6, okay? And this is the tumor endothelial marker 8, TEM8, okay? And, of course, it's bound uh, to the protective antigen 63, which is here. So this is the protective antigen 63. Okay, and you have seven of these all together in this uh, heptamer here. So let me colour in the different components in different colours. So I'll colour in the protective antigen 63 in green here. I'll colour in the LRP6 in orange. Okay, and I'll colour in the tumor endothelial marker 8 uh, in pink here. Now, what's going to happen is all seven of the tumor endothelial marker 8s, which are within our heptamer, here. And by the way, this heptamer is often referred to as a PA7-mer, like so. Okay? 
um, because really what promotes the heptamerization like this is the PA63. Okay, so it's a heptamer of PA63. Okay, so it's called a pa 7 or a pa heptamer is how you'd actually pronounce that. That's how it would be written, but you would call it a pa heptamer. Okay, right, uh, but it does contain the uh, tumor endothelial marker 8s and the LRP6s. Right, uh, so what you're now going to do is you're going to uh, ubiquitinate or ubiquitinate, they're both equivalent words for the same thing, uh, we're going to ubiquitinate uh, the intracellular aspects of these uh, seven um, tumor endothelial marker 8 proteins in this heptamer. Okay, so we're going to add ubiquitin groups onto uh, the cytoplasmic domain of these tumor endothelial marker 8 proteins. And it's this E3 ubiquitin ligase, which is called CBL, which is going to perform this ubiquitination. Okay, so this is a ubiquitin group that's now been added. Okay, and we now say that the uh, protein, the TEM8 protein, has been ubiquitinated. Okay, so ubiquitinated. Right. Okay, so let me colour in that ubiquitin group in blue. Now, once you have ubiquitinated uh, the uh, heptema, okay, so you've got seven ubiquitin groups now stuck onto the heptema, what's going to happen is the whole thing is going to be endocytosed. Okay, and this is a clathrin-mediated endocytosis that's going to now occur. Okay, so what will happen is you will form an endocytic vesicle. Okay, so let me draw this. So let's say we have our heptamer here, which I'll now just re represent as a square. Okay, and you'll get multiple of the heptamers together. It won't just be a single heptamer, you'll get multiple of them. But to keep the picture simple, we'll keep it as a single one. And what will happen is the whole thing will start to invaginate. Okay, you'll get this budding, and then clathrin will surround uh, the bud and will gradually turn it into a vesicle shape. Okay, so it will gradually pinch it off. And then it is another protein, dynamin, which eventually. Uh, finally pinches the vesicle off. Okay, and what you end up with then, okay, so let me draw the heptema in here, is finally you end up with an endocytic vesicle here, which contains our heptema. Okay, and note that uh, the side of the heptema which originally faced uh, the extracellular fluid is now facing the inside of this endocytic vesicle. So this is called an endocytic vesicle and it's important to understand that this is not an endosome. Often people confuse endocytic vesicles and endosomes. This is not an endosome. This is an endocytic vesicle. It's a little piece of membrane that we have now pinched off from the plasma membrane and of course it's going to contain the uh, the lipid raft. So um, lipid rafts are often used uh, for the sites of uh, endocytosis. Okay so this is a process of clathrin mediated endocytosis. So the entire heptema, which remember contains uh, seven of these uh, pro protective antigen 63 proteins bound to the uh, TEM8 protein, which also has its co-receptor LRP6. But remember it also importantly contains three of those other components of the anthrax toxin bound to its extracellular domain. And I'll draw these in now. Okay, so remember there are three um, of the other components of the anthrax toxin bound here, which could be the edema factor, or they could be the lethal factor. Okay, so this is clathrin-mediated endocytosis that has now occurred. And what will then happen is this endocytic vesicle will move into the cytoplasm of the cell, and it will now go to something called an endosome. Okay, so there is an intracellular organelle within all cells known as an early endosome, okay? And all the endocytic vesicles that come in from the um, plasma membrane are going to firstly go to the early endosome. And what's going to happen is this endocytic vesicle will come up and fuse with the early endosome. And if you can imagine what's going to happen if they will fuse together like so. Well, firstly, can I just add that 
this is out of scale. The endocytic vesicle will be tiny compared to the early endosome. It will be more like this, basically. So you're adding on a tiny bit of membrane. And what's going to happen is the early endosome is going to come along, fuse, and you can see that what's going to happen is this heptoma with the free um, other components of the anthrax toxin bound to it uh, is going to end up in the early endosome. And at the moment, uh, the free other proteins are facing the lumen of the early endosome. Now, once you get into the early endosome, what's going to happen is uh, this heptoma is going to change structure, basically. It's going to undergo a conformational change. And when it undergoes a conformational change, what happens is the heptoma opens up a channel through the middle of it. Okay, so let me draw a bigger picture of this now, so I'll go over the page. Okay, so effectively what's going to happen now is you're going to get a change in conformation that will change the heptoma so that it now has an opened pore. Okay, so there's a pore going through it. Okay, so it's created a pore from the lumen of the endosome uh, to, the, um, to the cytoplasm, basically. Okay, and you can probably imagine what's going to now happen. Okay, the free other components of anthrax toxin, the free uh, proteins that are either edema factors or lethal factors, so they're either EFs or NFs, are also going to change conformation. And their change in conformation, we know, is due to the lower pH within the endosome. So within the endosome, you have a low pH, which means that you have a high proton concentration. So low pH means acidic, so you have a high proton concentration within the early endosome. So if I draw the early endosome back again, there's a reasonably high concentration of protons compared to the cytoplasm. This high concentration of protons triggers changes in conformation in the free edema factors or lethal factors which are facing the lumen of the early endosome. And when they change conformation, they now move through this pore. And when they move through that pore, they're going to go from uh, the lumen of the early endosome into the cytoplasm. So now what you have released into the cytoplasm are edema factors and uh, lethal factors, LFs. So we now want to see what edema factor and lethal factor are both going to do. So edema factor, EF, is basically an adenylylcyclase enzyme, okay, which means that it converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Okay, so it takes ATP within the cell and starts converting it into cyclic AMP and also pyrophosphate. Okay, so you activate all of your cyclic AMP signaling mechanisms. And by the way, uh, the abbreviation for pyrophosphate is PP. And often people will put an I down there, just like when people write phosphate groups, they put a PI for inorganic phosphate group. Okay, now, what does lethal factor do? Well, basically, lethal factor is a um, protease, basically. It cuts proteins, and the proteins that it targets are uh, the MAP kinase kinase enzymes, specifically MAP kinase kinase 1 and MAP kinase kinase 2. Okay, so here is MAP kinase kinase 1, and here is MAP kinase kinase 2. Okay, so let me write their full name out. So MAP stands for mitogen activated protein, and then the kinase stands for kinase. Well, sorry, the K stands for kinase. So basically, this is mitogen activated protein kinase. That's the MAPK. And the mitogen activated protein kinase is a very important family of enzymes. Okay, now this enzyme is then a kinase for the MAP uh, kinase enzyme. Okay, so it's an enzyme which adds a phosphate group onto the enzyme which is the MAP kinase or the mitogen activated protein kinase. So it's a kinase enzyme which adds a phosphate group onto the mitogen activated protein kinase. And uh, these enzymes are also sometimes called MEC 
enzymes, M-E-K, and that stands for uh, MAP kinase ERK kinase, because another name for mitogen-activated protein kinase is to call it ERK. So this stands for the mitogen-activated protein kinase slash ERK kinase. And ERK stands for extracellular signal regulated kinase. So one of the things that is really complicated about the MAP kinase ERK pathway is because there are so many different names for the same thing, basically. So um, the mitogen-activated protein kinase is also commonly just called the MAP kinase, but it's also uh, called ERK which stands for extracellular signal regulated kinase. Okay, now they're really important, and they have a whole pathway named after them, which is the MAP kinase ERK pathway. Okay, and uh, this is one of those pathways that is downstream uh, of growth factor receptors, generally. Okay, and what am I doing here? Extracellular, get rid of this, signal regulated, Oops, I'm doing going awful now. Signal signal regulated kinase. Okay, so the E is for extracellular signal, the R is for regulated, and then the K is for kinase. Okay, and these pathways regulate uh, growth and differentiation within the cell. Okay, so this lethal factor is going to start chopping up your mitogen activated protein kinase kinase uh, one enzymes and your mitogen activated protein kinase kinase two enzymes, and that is going to hugely affect your MAP kinase ERK pathways so that they're hugely reduced, and this leads to cell death, basically. So this is one of the key ways in which um, these anthrax toxins cause cells to die, okay, and this is one of the key virulence factors of Bacillus anthracis bacteria.